the third generation of the versatile little Fiat Panda borrows from a long tradition. In the last 32 years, the Italian manufacturer has sold more than 6.5 million Pandas. The new model has a special design, aimed at displaying the Panda's roots. The car is full of rectangles with rounded corners. In the wheel arch, as well as in the rear side windows. The Fiat press spokesman Florian Bungener tells us that the designers wanted the new variant to be a panda at first sight. The design is based on the first pandas made, recognizably boxy, but transposed into the present, the combination of the original, simple, square panda design and the smooth arcs of the 500 series. The basis of the new Panda design is what our spokesman calls the Squircle. The Panda makes a good family car. It has five doors, and the Isofix fastenings for child seats in the back are standard. The Panda's compactness and maneuverability pay off in dense urban traffic. The standard power steering city option makes parallel parking simpler. New is the optional city emergency brake assistant. At speeds up to 30 kilometers an hour, it automatically puts on the brakes if the Panda threatens to rear-end the car in front. The new Panda is outfitted with an especially fuel-efficient two-cylinder twin-air gasoline engine, just like the Fiat 500. With a capacity of just 0.9 liters, it produces an astonishing 63 kilowatts. Fiat technical director Klaus Schuler says this motor is Fiat's approach to downsizing the modern motor. With just two cylinders, it produces more power than the old four-cylinder motor. And the latest motor is especially good for the environment. Schuler says fuel consumption averages 4.1 liters per 100 kilometers, with 99 grams of CO2 per kilometer with the stick shift version, or 95 grams of emissions per kilometer with the Dulogic transmission. We tested the twin air with the manual five-speed transmission. With mixed open road and city driving, we needed 4.2 liters of fuel per 100 kilometers. Even driving solely in the city, we needed only a little more, five liters. The start-stop function and the gear shift indicator help save fuel. The new tank filler neck is very practical and convenient. The gas cap is integrated in the tank filler flap. No more fiddling with the twist cap. And you can't forget it at the service station either. Squircles are found throughout the interior too. Hardly any opportunity was ignored to use the rounded square typical of the Panda design. The designers let their imaginations run wild with great attention to detail. A closer look reveals the Panda signature, even in the gray plastic cladding. A special socket makes it possible to plug a GPS navigator into the dashboard without distracting cables. Squircles in the upholstery provide more ventilation for the drivers and passengers' backs. The seats are slimmer, giving the back seats more leg room. Fiat's press spokesman says the target clientele is a broad spectrum. A few more Pandas are being sold to women than to men. But the car appeals equally to 18-year-olds and to drivers over 65. Florian Bungana says Panda drivers come from all age groups and all strata of society. Our only quibble is that to keep the no options price low, Fiat has not made the Electronic Stabilization Program ESP standard, but it's available for all versions at 300 euros extra. A natural gas variant and an all-wheel version of the new Panda are set to follow.
In June, this Mercedes of gargantuan proportions will be ferrying the German national soccer team around the European Championships. It runs on six wheels and measures over 3 meters high and 14 meters long. The new Travego L Edition 1. It is the first in its class to meet the Euro 6 emissions norm, which doesn't come into effect until 2014. A professional bus driver checks out the front cabin. And Marco is impressed. The buttons are easy to find and operate, he adds, and you have everything you need. As well as being a pleasure to drive, the bus is also a pleasure to the environment. This wasn't about one particular development, explains Daimler's head of bus engineering, Richard Aberbeck. This takes a bit of effort. The work done by colleagues from the truck division helped them to create a great engine with exhaust after treatment. The Travigo also has a few treats on the inside. We persuaded a group of tourists to join us on a spontaneous test trip. So, also we have here in this Fahrzeug. The navigation is shown on one of three monitors, says bus driver Werner Gieselmann. Another special feature is that you can follow the journey route. But you can also switch over to a panoramic camera instead of the sat-nav. Now you can see the view outside that the bus driver has, through the nice big windscreen. Now the passengers can likewise see all the way from the back. Let's try it out. Seat belts on. <laughs> Welcome aboard our little city test run. The newly designed engine generates 350 kilowatts from a 12.8 liter displacement and only 1,800 revs a minute. The bus now also boasts safety features previously seen in passenger cars. Daimler's Richard Aberbeck highlights the advanced emergency brake assist. The current generation, he says, also responds to stationary vehicles and obstacles. And here is the radar sensor. What makes this vehicle special is the way it uses radar beams instead of visual aids. It's extremely sensitive when it comes to adverse weather or light conditions. The first impression is a comfortable one. And our test passengers are really impressed with the driver's view shown on the monitors. The panorama picture is fantastic, and it's no doubt very pleasant for people at the back, too. Here at the front, you don't have the same problem, but further back, it's nice to have that view. It's great to be able to see what your guide is talking about up front, says this passenger. This is a great idea for the future, adds this man, improving the comfort of bus journeys. And are we sitting comfortably? Yes, she likes the bus, very comfortable. And you can buckle up. Great. The driver's display shows the tire pressure and engine temperature, plus information concerning the adaptive cruise control. The driver would on the one hand see the desired top speed in the display, at the same time there's the actual current speed, which is of course aligned with that of the vehicle in front. With our jaunt over, it's time to let our passengers get back to their well-deserved vacations but they seem to have enjoyed the little spin in the new Mercedes bus. The first units of the new Travego have already been dispatched to Sweden, and visitors from farther afield also seem keen. We hope to see this in Canada. Yeah, that would be great. Yeah. Audi has introduced the new S6. Its 4-liter, 8-cylinder motor provides 309 kilowatts. A cylinder shutoff function helps to save fuel when four cylinders provide enough power. The S6 is supposed to consume an average of 9.6 liters of fuel 
per 100 kilometers. Renault presents the Twizy, a new vehicle concept for inner-city driving that combines the advantages of a car and a motor scooter. The two-seater runs only on electric power. Thanks to its four wheels, familiar pedal arrangement, and steering wheel, it drives just like a conventional car. The 13-kilowatt Twizy ranges 100 kilometers between recharges and costs 7,000 euros in Germany. A garage in Munich. This is where vintage fan Richard Orthuber guards his most precious treasure, an Amphicar model 770 built 50 years ago. Richard tells us that the basic idea behind Amphicar, designed by constructor Hans Trippel, was to create a car that could travel both on land and on water. Trippel's idea was that driving over mountains wasn't as important as crossing rivers. He didn't see much need for off-roaders. He wanted a car for water and land. To drive on water, the Amphicar needed some very special extra features. That's the horn. These are the navigation lights like you see on a motorboat. They're red and green and enable distant ships to see which direction he's going in. To ensure the hood closes tight with the rubber seals, it is fixed in place using two square key locks. Construction constraints meant that only the rear wheels are powered, says Richard. All-wheel drive would have been ideal for getting out of the water, but if you get stuck, it also comes with a tow hook. Up front, it has a double floor, like any other boat, so your feet stay dry. The water that does come in at the front, plus the inevitable spray from waves, drains off quickly below, via the double floor, and then into the bilge. At the back, there's a bilge pump to remove the water from the vessel. Richard then powers up the little four-cylinder engine, originally hailing from a Triumph Herald. Packing just 38 horsepower, the Autobahns are no place for the Amphicar. Slow country roads are far more up its alley. The Amphicar is practically a boat on wheels. It has a higher center of gravity, which means it's pretty vulnerable around bends. You just have to take it out onto the water, enthuses Richard. It's more boat than car. The four-speed transmission was taken from a Tempo Matador van. Then a water reverse gear was fitted. Today, Richard is motoring out on the Chiemsee in Bavaria. The moment the car hits the water, it dives down at the front. I still get nervous every time. You always wonder whether it will sink or swim. It's all metal at the front and back. It has bolts everywhere. If there's a leak anywhere, it'll go down like a rock. But it works every time, and that's fascinating. Just when you thought it was safe to back onto the water, a whole fleet of amphicars appears on the horizon. Richard is here at the lake to meet some other enthusiasts. They provide an extra surprise for tourists on the passenger boats. Steering is just like with a car, explains Richard, via the front wheels. With regular boats, you use rudders, and in this case, tires. But they work. The only thing that's different are the brakes. So let's get moving. On the water, amphicars can reach up to 12 kilometers an hour. But even at such slow speeds, in Germany, you need an extra motorboat license to drive this baby across lakes or rivers. Two hours later, land ahoy. The car's at a bit of an angle. Any water that has entered the boat during the journey should have run towards the back. Richard wants to see whether the bilge pump is in action. And lo and behold, 
another adventure that the Amphicar has survived unscathed. Richard couldn't imagine selling his prized possession. Maybe his daughters will take an interest one day. But for now, he'll keep on servicing it. The cars are gradually disappearing, he says. Most are now in collectors' hands, but nobody's going to get his.